We gather tonight on the solemnity of all souls or all saints to celebrate one of the most important solemnities in the church year. And the reason why All Saints Day came to be, I'm sure that many of you probably know this already, was because there are about 12,000 canonized saints. In other words, there's about 12,000 saints throughout the 2,000 year history of the church that have been declared through various uh, forms and miracles and acknowledgments that they are indeed in heaven with God and the church has declared that. And out of those 12,000 names, only about, because there's only room during the liturgical year, 365 days, there's only about, minus the other solemnities, there's only that much room on the Roman calendar throughout the year to actually contain all those saints to celebrate them. And the actual saints that are celebrated on those days are probably only about 200 throughout the year. Each day, most people don't know, but every canonized saint has a day to be celebrated, and so there can be 12 saints or so on a day, but they're hardly ever known because we usually only celebrate one particular saint on a day we celebrate a saint. So in order to honor all of the saints in heaven, all of the saints we would call triumphant, the church established this day on November 1st, uh, a day for our hemisphere, of course, is a day of fall, a day of dying, um, to remind us of, in the midst of the death around us and the trees and the leaves, the fact that there is a life yet to come. And so today we honor all of the saints in heaven. And the church has always believed that the church is like three parts. You may have remembered this, uh, some of our more mature folks here from the older church days. There was considered the church, milita uh, church militant, the church suffering, and the church triumphant. Does anybody remember those three parts? The church militant, the church suffering, the church triumphant. triumphant. And those terms are still very important. The church militant, of course, is us. Uh, when you think of the church militant, uh, you might think of a website, I suppose. We get that word military from uh, soldiers, of course. It's a Roman word from miles, which meant soldier. But more to it, we get our word mile from that word. And the reason why we get mile from the word miles, which meant soldier in Latin, is because why is a, why is a mile 5,280 feet? It's because a mile was 1,000 double paces of a Roman soldier in the army. That's how they counted it. And so it didn't refer simply to a military. It was a term that was associated with it. But the church militant is the church that is walking on the way. Walking on the way to what? On the way we hope to sainthood. On the way to salvation. And so for anything that we may have missed or any purification that we uh, may need, the church has always considered the second part is the church suffering. The church suffering, of course, is those holy souls in purgatory. That's the day we celebrate tomorrow for All Souls Day. And of course, the final category is the celebration that we have today. The church triumphant. Those people who have grown in such a degree of friendship with God... Uh, that they have received their ward and are with what they only beheld in mystery, they now hold in reality. Friends, what does it mean to be a saint? And do, did you know that you're called to be a saint? And the reaction I usually get to that is, no father, that can't possibly be. If you knew me, if you knew what I've done, if you knew where my life was going, you would say that you're, you, you're wrong, father. You can't be a saint. I'm not called to be that. Well, as a professor of mine would often say in seminary when we would talk about, well, we're sinners, he would say, well, then why are you baptized? Why did you receive baptism? The truth is, is that everyone of us is called to be in heaven. Is there anyone here that's not called to be in heaven? Okay, good. <laughs> You're here for the right reason. But if we're all called to heaven and everyone in heaven is a saint... Logically, it means that every one of us is called to be a saint. What is a saint? A saint is not something you do. A saint is something you have with Christ. A saint is a relationship that you have with God, and it informs every relationship, every decision, and every action of your existence. 
And although we know every one of us falls short, we are the church militant now, the church that is still walking on the way, step by step. We know that we have to have that goal and that vision in mind that the first reading from Revelation gives us. You know, every time we gather around Mass, around for Mass, this is supposed to be a foreshadowing of the heavenly vision that's given to us in the book of Revelation. You know, if you have time tonight, and you're just before you go to bed, grab a Bible and read the reading from tonight from Revelation 7. All of these people gathered rejoicing around God's throne in heaven, saying, Amen, Alleluia, to the Lamb. The same Lamb of God that will appear on this altar today at Mass is the same Lamb of God in reality that will be present in heaven, who is Christ the King. So friends, no matter where you are in your life, I want to leave you with this quote. Now many of us are afraid in life of failures. We're afraid of uh, sadness. We're afraid of the things that we want not being able to make us happy because so oftentimes we get what we think will make us happy and we realize that we're not. We deal with tragedies in our life, the loss of loved ones, the loss of our own health, the loss of maybe our own abilities or maybe a debilitating disease that we have, whatever, it, whatever the case may be. Leon Bloy uh, left us with a very important quote that I want to leave you tonight with. He said, the only real sadness, the only real failure, and the only great tragedy in life is to not be a saint. Can you think of any greater tragedy that doesn't at the same time hold its vision out to the life that God offers us after this one? Can you think of any failure that you've had that you thought was going to end everything, but the only real failure you can really have with God is to lose your relationship with him or to walk away from it? The only real sadness that ever lasts eternally is to lose that great vision that God has for your life. So today, friends, as we hear that quote from Leon Boy, the inspiration that we garner from the saints, who even many of them, to the point of their blood, would not give up their relationship with the Lord, which is why we hear in our gospel, of course, the roadmap to holiness and sanctification. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are more who they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. You go over those beatitudes, and one thing that you notice, they're all in the future tense, exception to the first one. Blessed are they who mourn, they will be comforted in the future. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. God is more concerned about your future than he is your past. And if your future is directed properly, it will always be your purpose and goal in life and the sanctification of your soul. So today, friends, as we honor all of the saints, does, any, does everybody here want to be a saint? St. Thomas Aquinas, a 13th century saint, one of the most intelligent we've ever had in the 2,000 year history, wrote us enough to fill a small library. Somebody wrote him a letter once and asked him a simple question. Thomas, how can a person be a saint? He replied with two words. Want it. <laughs>